Well, good morning and welcome to our worship. You're going to be viewing this on Sunday, January 24th, but I'm actually recording this today on Wednesday, January 20th. It's been Inauguration Day. It's a beautiful day. Bo Becker is out here fishing with his buddies. You can all give a wave if you want, and you want to watch this on Sunday or anytime this next week and do that, guys. So anyway, it's great to have you for worship. We're out here on the, Miss not the Mississippi River, the Minnesota River in downtown Lesseur. I'm going to do my sermon here in just a few minutes, but I want to welcome you to worship. It's great to have you with us today on this 24th day of January, and I hope to see you at the annual meeting uh, this morning, or maybe you've already been at the meeting. So again, thanks for being with us. Good morning, and welcome to worship at First Lutheran. I'm sitting at my piano where a lot of worship preparation happens. I preview a lot of music, choose the hymns for Sunday morning, and plan the prelude and postlude. Every week we record those hymns, and I want to thank Joan and Leroy May and Jennifer Wyke for being there to accompany the hymns every week. Also, a huge appreciation to those who have provided special music. They have taken the time to select something, rehearse, and record at church to enhance your worship experience. I appreciate their willingness to give their time and especially their talent to First Lutheran. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to our worship today, Sunday, January 24th, 2021. Today is the third Sunday in the season of Epiphany. There are actually six Sundays in the season of Epiphany. We have three more through Sunday, February 7th. And I hope you've noticed in this season of discovery of Jesus that the light is coming into the world, the days are becoming longer, and we certainly welcome the promise of spring coming before long. We will be having our annual meeting this morning. If you're viewing this early in the morning, if you're, earlier, if you're an early bird at 7 or 8 o'clock, be sure to tune in for our annual meeting by Zoom at 9.30. But we actually encourage you to log in at 9 o'clock. I recognize some of you have probably already been at our annual meeting. Thank you for being at it if you're viewing this later in the day. Um, 
few announcements here. We still have copies of Living Lutheran. Uh, it has daily devotionals for the months of January, February, and March. If you'd like one of those, call the church office. Stacy would be happy to send one of those to you. Uh, the month of January, we've been focusing on campership. We encourage all of our young people to go to Bible camp. And as the Grisons have said a week ago, family camp is a wonderful opportunity for families too. If you'd like more information, call the church office or talk to Grisons. We have many wonderful Bible camps right here in Minnesota and in other places around the country as well. We do encourage those of you who would like to, to make contributions to help offset the cost of camp for our young people and parents of young people. If, you, uh, if the cost of camp seems maybe a little high, please know that for our members, we pay half the cost of camp up to $200 and that, uh, that's really a big help. So if you'd like to help with, uh, with that, building up that fund, send a contribution to the church so designated. Uh, we want to thank the members of First Lutheran that have been staffing the First Lutheran Food Shelf for the month of January. Aaron Tiki has been coordinating that. Again, thank you, Aaron, and to all those volunteers. Uh, one other announcement. We do have a, a short uh, temple talk today from Cooper Vandenida. Cooper is going to talk to us about her experience at Bible Camp. So thank you in advance, Cooper, for sharing that message with us this morning. Going to Bible camp was an awesome experience, and I'm sure it would be for you as well. Some of my best memories are canoeing across the lake, only to get eaten alive by a million mosquitoes, laying on uneven ground and waking up to some delicious watered-down oatmeal. Boy, doesn't that sound fun. Well, you know what? It is. Um... I have had the opportunity to go to Lake Chitek Bible Camp with some of my awesome friends, Sophie Wilson and Lexi Terwido, and we still talk about it to this day. Um, now, I could sit here all day and talk to you about how awesome camp, in, camp is and all the amazing memories I have there, but it's something that you truly have to go and experience for yourself. Some of the things I can guarantee you will gain from going to camp are gaining some new awesome friendships, learning new games, deepening your relationship with Christ, and memories that will last a lifetime. Go find your camp. And now we begin our worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now we thank Marcy Grison for reading us part of the story of Jonah and the great fish. The first reading comes from Jonah chapter 3. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim it to it, it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh. According to the word of the Lord, Mount Nineveh was an exceedingly large city. A three days walk across, Jonah began to go to the city, getting a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh should be, shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on a sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them. And he did not do it. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. to God. Thank you, Marcy. And now, Rita Petraeus will be reading for us some of Paul's writings to the community of Corinth, his first letter to the seventh chapter. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 29 to 31. Brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel for today, this third Sunday of the Epiphany, comes to, to us from the Gospel of St. Mark, the first chapter, and beginning at verse 14. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Before I read this, I just want to share, this is uh, it's the story of Jesus calling his disciples. And I came out here on the river because I assumed that there would be fishermen here. And sure enough, there were. Bo Becker and his friends are here. I'm waiting for them to catch a fish. Hopefully, they'll catch a fish. And we'll be able to see that during our sermon. Maybe they'll even follow me or follow Jesus. Uh, our text begins at verse 14. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his, brothers, and his brother Andrew casting a net out into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending their nets. Immediately he called them. And they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men. And they followed Jesus. The gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Oh, grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. It's been a memorable week here in the United States of America. On Wednesday, President Trump left the White House. He went to Florida. And President Biden was inaugurated. He made a speech, and it's, we've begun a, a time of transition, the transition of power, a new chapter in our nation's history. Um, in some ways, we are always in a time of transition. As you can see now, we're, we're down here on the Minnesota River. We're not far from downtown Lesur. Um, the guys are out here fishing. They haven't caught anything yet, but pretty soon they're going to. Um, you can see the bridge over there. You know, I mentioned that we're in a time of transition. In many ways, the river is always in a time of transition. If you were with us a few weeks ago, you were here when there was all open water. Today, we're standing out here on the ice. There is a good solid foot of ice underneath us, about 15 feet of water underneath that. And I think there's probably some fish down there. But this river always goes through a time of transition throughout the year. If you were to come here in the spring, maybe three months from now in the month of April, you'd find that the water is a whole lot higher, probably even up over its banks. I've even seen it lapping close to the bottom of the bridge behind me. And then in the summertime, the water goes down, it slows down. And in the fall of the year, we see the colors on the leaves turn. The leaves fall into the river and the river carries them down to the Mississippi and the Gulf of Mexico and beyond. And then in the winter time, and we're in the depth of winter right now, even though it's actually a pretty nice day, the water becomes hard as rock. It becomes solid ice and you can even walk out here on it. I've always enjoyed being near the water. I've enjoyed boating, canoeing, swimming, watching sunrises and sunsets over a lake or over a river. And of course, I too enjoy fishing. If, uh, if I wasn't busy working today, I'd pull out a rod and I'd join these guys and I'd go fishing and see if I could catch a fish. You find fish in water. And that's part of the reason I came out here today to do my sermon. Because Jesus calls fishermen to be his disciples, to come and follow him. You only find fish in the water. And it's interesting that so many of Jesus' stories take place around the water. He's baptized in the River Jordan. We heard that a couple weeks ago. We hear the story of Jesus stilling the storm when he's with the fishermen, not the fishermen, but the disciples out on the Sea of Galilee. We hear the story of how he walks on water and he calls Peter to come and, and Peter falls into the water. He doesn't have the faith. We hear about Jesus healing the blind man and restoring his sight at the pool of Salome. 
And then we hear the story of Jesus at the well. And the woman comes and meets him there. And Jesus asks for a drink of water. And the woman asks him, how is, how is he going to get the water? He has, no, he has no cup and the well is deep. Jesus proclaims to her that the water that he will give is a water that gushes up to eternal life. Powerful words of Jesus. In last week's gospel, we heard John's account of Jesus calling his disciples. There was no mention of water there. No mention that Simon and Andrew, James and John were fishermen. Today, we hear really the same story, only we hear it from the gospel of Mark. And in this lesson, Jesus comes down to the lake and he calls them. He calls Andrew and Simon and James and John. And in Mark's gospel, everything happens quickly. And, and Mark says they left their nets immediately and followed Jesus. And James and John left their father and they left the hired men and they followed Jesus immediately. I like John's version, but quite frankly, I like Mark's version even more because I'm a person who loves to fish. I love fishing. And, you know, my history of fishing goes back quite a ways. I remember when I was a kid, I grew up in Waterloo, Iowa, and my grandfather would take me fishing. The way we fished with my grandfather was he would put hooks on, he would put worms on the hook when I was little. And we'd cast out into the river and we'd sit there and we'd wait for the fish to bite. You know, quite frankly, I don't remember catching a lot of fish, but we made a lot of good memories. I have excellent, wonderful, cherished memories of those times with my grandfather. It was when I was in college that I kind of learned a new way of fishing. That's when I made my first trip to the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness up in northern Minnesota. And I, knew, I learned a new way of fishing there. I learned to fish with artificial lures, with spinners and jigs and spoons and things like that. It was really a time of transition for me, learning how to fish in a new way. Not casting bait, but learning to, to cast a lure and put it in the right place and draw it back at the right speed or to drop it down to the bottom. And I think what, that's what Bo is doing here, dropping down to the bottom and trying to get a walleye down there at the bottom. And one of the wonderful things about the boundary waters of the Quetico is the clear, beautiful water, the abundance of nature and the natural surroundings there. A wonderful place to be. I have learned a lot about fishing. I still don't proclaim to be a, a great fisherman, but I enjoy fishing a lot, whether it's here in southern Minnesota or up in the northern part of the state or even in Canada. My fishing transitioned a lot over the years. It transitioned from, from putting a worm on a hook to learning to lose, use the lure. Today is really a time of transition for our nation, for our whole, our whole country and the world, and a new, with new leadership in Washington. This river is going to go through a transition, and the disciples of Jesus, Andrew and Peter, James and John, they're going through a time of transition as well. Today in our lesson, we hear Jesus as he comes to them, and he says, follow me. Follow me, and I will make you fish for men. Sometimes I wonder what I would have responded had Jesus said those words to me, follow me. I'll be honest with you, in some ways, I think I maybe would have said, uh, you know, no thanks. I'll stay here with these nets, or I'll stay here with these guys and, and fish on the river or fish on the lake. But the four fishermen didn't do that. They accepted Jesus' invitation. They accepted an invitation to transition. Their lives were going to be changed forever. They didn't run in the opposite direction. They followed Jesus. And as I mentioned, Mark says it, it, they followed immediately. They left their nets. They left their father, the hired men. They left their boats, and they followed Jesus. What makes that possible? What makes that possible for them to do that? 
You know, I think it might be helpful to note that contrary to popular belief, Jesus doesn't call them to fish for people. He calls them to follow. Those were, are his first words. Follow me. Follow me. And then it's, it's if they do that, that he will make them fish for people. Follow me is what Jesus says to his disciples. It is, in fact, a call, an invitation that comes with a promise. Fishing for people? Are you kidding? I couldn't imagine doing that. Following Jesus? I think I can do that. It would start for sure with spending time in worship, studying the scriptures, taking time for prayer and devotion. It would include, for sure, making a commitment to putting Jesus first in my life and following him. And there'd be no way to guess where that might lead. But it wouldn't be too hard to figure out how to start, to leave things behind and follow Jesus, to enter into a time of transition. This last week, there's been a relatively smooth transition in Washington. We pray that it continues in the coming days and weeks, that there be healthy dialogue and that there be unity, even though there's sometimes difference of opinion. In his call to follow, Jesus invited his 12 disciples to come with him to transition to a new way of living. I would suggest to you that today Jesus invites us to a time of transition as well, to follow him. We we'll certainly live in a nation that's divided. It's probably more divided now than it ever has been. And as followers of Jesus, we are called to build one another up, not to tear one another down, to forgive as we have first been forgiven by God in Christ Jesus, to love our neighbors even as we love ourselves. We have work to do as individuals, as a church, as a nation, and as the human family. We worship a God, a loving God, who calls us in Christ Jesus to follow him. And Jesus sets an example for us. He calls us to follow and he promises to make us fishers of men, fishers of people. He calls us to be stewards of the earth, to take care of this planet on which we live, to care for the land, the water, the air, and most importantly, to care for another, for, to care for one another. And so that's so critically important in this time of pandemic. Last week, I quoted for you the words of the prophet Micah from the Old Testament. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with the Lord your God? I think those are good words for us maybe especially today and especially as we hear these words of Jesus to come and to follow him and to trust that somehow he will make us fishers of people. It is an invitation that carries a promise. Let us embrace it and see where it leads us. Thanks be to God. Amen.
We join together now in confessing our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. God of grace and love, we thank you for our First Lutheran Church faith community. We pray, we pray for all those who call this their church home. Today we pray especially for these First Lutheran Church members. Gary Schultz, Marilyn Schultz, Michael and Ashley Schultz, and their children, Drianna, Ellie, and Camille, Ron and Marie Schultz, Terry and Melissa Schwartz, and their children, Janie and Jack, Craig and Megan Schwartz, and their children, Lane and Maya. Be with them, keep them safe, and guide them with your spirit. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the church throughout the world, for pastors and teachers, youth directors, and CYF staff, for church council members, treasurers, custodians, musicians, and committee members that all proclaim the good news of God's reconciling love, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For skies and seas, for birds and fish, for favorable weather and clean water, for the wonder of wintertime in Minnesota and the promise of spring, and for the well-being of creation that God raise up advocates and scientists to guide our care for all the earth, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those who provide leadership in cities and nations around the world, for nonprofit and non governmental organizations, for planning commissions and homeless advocates, for the new administration in Washington, D.C., that God inspire all people in the just use of power, wealth, and decision making. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those who are sick, distressed, or grieving, for the speedy and safe distribution of the coronavirus vaccines, for the outcast, and all who await relief. Especially today, we pray for Mark Zier, Dwayne Peterson, father of Jody Bruns, Pastor Dave Ocker, and for all those who deal with afflictions of physical, mental, or emotional health, that in the midst of suffering, God's peace and mercy would surround and sustain them. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For our faith community, as we conduct the business of our congregation in our annual meeting today, for the Lesur community, for our schools and businesses, law enforcement and fire protection, healthcare providers and first responders, elected leaders, for families big and small, and for the many organizations that exist for the common good of our local community and the larger world, that God's steadfast love serve as a model for all relationships. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for our ancestors in the faith, whose lives serve as an example of gospel living, that they point us to salvation through Christ Jesus, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We do want to thank you for joining us for our worship. At this time, we would be receiving an offering in our in-person worship. We thank you for the offerings that you have sent in, whether you've sent them by mail, submitted them electronically, or just dropped them in the, in the box outside the front door. We also thank you for the prayers and your support of our ministry. Let us pray. Oh God, God receive, receive these gifts as you receive us. Like, like a mother receives her child with, with arms open wide. Nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with the same love. 
through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, name. your kingdom come, come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today our daily bread. bread. Forgive, Forgive us our sins as we forgive those, those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Receive this blessing. God, the creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Amen. Today's closing hymn is Build Us Up, Lord. It's found on the back page of your annual report, and it tells about the mission of our church. Enjoy the hymn. Again, we thank you for joining us. Go now in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also, also with, with you. you. Do share that peace with one another, whether it's with the person in the room with you or someone on the phone or send a text, but share the peace that we have together in our Lord Jesus Christ. And we'll look forward to seeing you next week.